for those who are not familiar with Michigan's trigger law, it actually criminalizes inducing a miscarriage. Can you talk us through how that would limit reproductive health care? Um, it would limit not only reproductive health care, but it would limit health care in a myriad of ways. Um, number one, of course, this law criminalizes all forms of abortion. So at any age and for any reason, including rape and incest. Not only that, but there are lots of times where procedures, uh, DNC, for example, the procedure that is used in many abortions, are used for other types of uh, medical interventions. A DNC could be performed for a non-viable pregnancy. It could be performed for a woman who is experiencing a miscarriage. There's also times when um, reduction in the number of embryos can be performed in fertility care. And all of those types of medical care could be severely limited by this 1931 law. The judge mentioned providers could also face charges for helping secure out-of-state abortion care. Can you explain that part? Absolutely. Um, what we were really dealing with was um, county prosecutors wanting to, to prosecute under this 1931 law. And I think that depending on um, individual county prosecutors' political motivations and, um, and the way they went about this, they really could have prosecuted anyone for aiding and abetting a woman in procuring a miscarriage. And that goes back to the original wording of the 1931 law, which is, I think, problematic in so many ways, because this is simply not terminology that we use in the medical right. system. How are abortion clinics dealing with the legal uncertainty in Michigan? I think that it has really been a roller coaster ride. It's been a roller coaster ride for healthcare providers as well as for women who were um, expecting to um, receive procedures. So there were there were a few days where procedures were canceled across the board. Now that we have this um, temporary restraining order in place, abortions are um, legal in the sense that the 13 county prosecutors in which our abortion um, clinics reside cannot enforce this 1931 law. Um, but again, it's a very, it's a time of great uncertainty. And I think it's not only putting women at risk and putting public health at risk, but it's putting healthcare providers at risk. Well, you layer on top of that, the fact that more and more surrounding states have been enacting abortion restrictions. What does that then, what does that mean for Michigan providers? Well, we know that there are abortion restrictions in places like Ohio, for example. So there were already women from Ohio traveling to Michigan for abortions or for other types of procedure um, that would be criminalized in Ohio. And so now it layers uncertainty for those women as well. They were already having to go out of state to receive the, the procedures they needed, and it layers additional complexity on top of that. Um, and we know that this will impact the most vulnerable. This will impact black and brown women the most. It will impact women um, who are living below the poverty line, women who don't have access to transportation, women who can't take time off work to travel for a procedure like this. So this is something that's going to impact poor women, black and brown women, disproportionately. And that's really unfortunate.